Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Practice Podcast, the podcast where I get to simplify the marketing and the mindset necessary so chiropractors can make more money, have more impact, and have a whole bunch more joy in their personal and practice lives too. Today's episode is going to be super tactical. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to be talking all about how to make better videos so you can attract more patients. These tips are going to be a mixture of what to do to make your videos actually look better and also how to make the video is more engaging, um, have more meaning and depth into them too. If you're not using videos to build relationships with people in your community, if you're not using videos to continue to engage with your existing patients, gang, now's the time to start. And today's podcast episode will really help you make better videos. Let's dive into it because we've got lots to share. Tip number one is stand closer to your camera. As a general rule, when I'm reviewing videos from community influencer and video influence members as well, most of them are standing way too far back from the camera. Now, when we're standing too far back from the camera, it makes it difficult for your audience to engage with you. It makes it difficult for us to see the uh, facial expressions, the body language, for us to pick up on some of the subtleties of what video is sharing. Now, as a general rule, when you're shooting your videos, you want to be about an arm's length away from it. So if I look to my iPhone over the side here, I reach my arm out, it's just a little bit further than that. That means, because most of you, if you're watching the video for this, you're probably watching this on your mobile device. The screen is small and you want to be able to kind of see my facial expressions. You want to be able to see what my eyes are doing. You want to be able to see what I'm doing. If I'm too far away from the camera, we miss some of the subtleties of that. So we miss that engaging medium that is video as well. Now also, when your camera is too far away, it really impacts the sound. I'm going to talk about sound in tip two in a moment there as well. Now I understand sometimes if you're showing something, maybe an exercise, um, if you're wanting to show an adjustment, then you need to be far enough back so the video can see. But if it's a talking video, much like I'm doing now, make sure that you're nice and close to the camera. We don't need to see you really from the waist down. The chest up is, is enough there too. So make sure that you're close enough to the camera is tip number one. <clears throat> now tip number two, if you want to be making videos that attract more patients, please don't ignore the sound. I watched a really great video the other day that one of the video influence members sent me. He was sharing a message. It was beautifully impromptuly shot um, in like a food court. We was talking just about some great eating tips, um, some great information on how his practice members and community could better manage their health. Visually, it looked really great. The framing was great. He was nice and close to the camera. But the moment he started to talk, the microphone he was using on his phone there picked up all the background uh, sound and I could barely hear a word that he said. Now, I was trying to turn it up really loud on my computer to review it and it, it was unlistenable. And so sound is super important. We ignore this often on video. But let me remind you, we will listen to really good audio. If you're listening to this as a podcast, we're happy to listen to audio without sound. But if we're watching a video and it has really terrible sound, <clears throat> you're not going to get long before your audience are going to turn off. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to buy fancy microphones, although I'll give you two recommendations if you'd like to buy some microphones in a moment. It just means that you need to really think about the environment that you're shooting your video in. If you're shooting it outside, particularly where there's a lot of background noise or inside where there's a lot of background noise like Michael was doing there too, you need to be really mindful of it. If you're going to be consistently shooting in those environments, you will need an external microphone because your iPhone or whatever device you're using will pick up on a lot of that background sound. This is where an external microphone can be really helpful. Now at its cheapest, you can just get plug-in wired Lavelle, lapel, 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 lavalier, that's the word I'm after, lavalier microphones. I'm a huge fan of Rode, R-O-D-E. It's an Australian company, but they sell their microphones around the world. They have a fantastic reputation, and in terms of return on investment, for what you pay for what you get is really fantastic. So, you know, for 50 bucks or so, you can get a plug-in um, microphone that'll plug straight into the jack in your phone, whether you be an iPhone or an Android user as well. And that means if you're shooting in a noisy environment, um, it'll block out all the background noise and it'll make sure it picks up you. If you want something that's not wired, but wireless, that allows a little bit more freedom of movement, particularly helpful if you move around during your videos a little bit, particularly helpful if you're showing things in your videos, then again, another Rode product. They have a product called the Wireless Go. Now, there's now a Wireless Go 2, which 
has some fancier um, things that it does, most of which we won't need as chiropractors there too. But if you want to spend the money, either the Rode Wireless or the Wireless Go, it's about 250 bucks, and it'll last you forever. Like it's my uh, first wireless microphone that I got was a Sennheiser product. And I had it for like 12 years and I could still use it right now. It's just a bit big and bulky. I now have the Rode Wireless um, product. It's fantastic. It improves the audio if I'm out and moving about. So don't ignore sound. Sound is one of those things that has a big impact on the video. Now, as a side note, Instagram recently released some information in around their algorithm. What goes into them showing videos and not showing videos? And the actual quality of the video in terms of the sound, is it blurry, visually what it looks like? These things all play a role. So don't underestimate these things, okay? So if we have a video that visually looks really terrible, if we have a video that has really lousy sound, I'm gonna to talk to you about um, uh, video quality in a moment as we dive through these tips. Even if you're sharing fabulous information, then Instagram certainly, and probably the other platforms too, will throttle that. It won't get out as much. So making sure you implement these tips here is, is super important there too. Tip number three, shoot your videos in portrait, which means we really wanna have long videos or high videos rather than wide videos. Now, most of us are consuming and interacting on the social media platforms on our iPhone or our mobile devices. In fact, more than 80% of people are accessing the internet on their mobile devices. And when we're on our mobile device, we don't turn it to the side, we have it upright. And we really wanna maximize the screen. It was BuzzFeed recently ran a whole bunch of, no, it wasn't BuzzFeed, it was Buffer. All of these different uh, websites that basically showed that you're gonna get a whole bunch more interaction, engagement, exposure, when your videos are long videos as opposed to wide videos. Now, you can kind of fit in the middle of this by shooting a square video. On my iPhone, and probably if you're an Android uh, user as well, there are plenty of apps or in the actual camera app itself, you can actually shoot square videos. Um, so at the very least, shoot a square video, but probably you wanna be shooting videos that are vertical videos referred to as well. It just takes up much more of the screen. It's visually more eye-catching, and it is the way that videos are heading towards. These wide videos are the sort of videos that we're watching on our television and when we go to the cinema, but they're not the tort, not the tort, the sort. Man, I've got the mumbles today. They're not the type and or the sort of videos that work really best on our mobile device. So if you want more people watching your videos, make sure you're shooting vertical videos. Okay, on to tip number four. If you're wanting to have more people engaging with your videos, if you're wanting to be attracting more patients because of your videos, then don't make your videos too long. I was looking back on some old trainings of mine from three or four years ago, and I was saying that most of your videos need to be in around that three, four, maybe five minute mark. And now what I'm saying to most of your videos need to be up to one minute. Okay, the vast majority of your videos should be less than a minute. So if we said maybe six out of 10 of your videos you're making should be less than a minute. Maybe the other 30% of your videos, the other three out of 10 could be in that three to five minute mark. And then maybe one out of 10 of your videos could be five minutes and up, okay? Now, attention spans are continuing to decrease. I'm interested to see what I'll be saying in another three to five years time. I don't know how short it will get. Maybe we'll be talking about 10 second videos. It's been done, Vine has been doing, or came and, and went with regards to that. But most of your videos need to be short, okay? Now this is, the more of a relationship that you have with people, the more likely they will be to listen to or watch longer videos. So to begin with, think about your own behaviors. If you're scrolling through and a video captures your attention, but you see that it's a 12 minute video and you don't know this person, you don't know, like, or trust them, um, you're not likely to spend 12 minutes watching an entire video. You probably just skip past it, certainly what I do. But if it's somebody that I really like and I know their content and I've built up a whole bunch of trust with them, then I'll absolutely spend 12 minutes, 20 minutes, longer. Now maybe what I might do is I might bookmark it and come back to it later. But we wanna begin our relationships with short interactions. That one minute video, particularly on Instagram at the moment, uh, Reels, a fantastic way. Um, Instagram stories, Facebook uh, stories. These are the sort of small snippets of information that we can use to begin the relationship. Now that moves on to tip number five, a really great tip here if you're wanting to you know, create better videos that attract more patients, is don't try and share too much. What I see is as you guys are making more videos, great first of all, and then you're shortening them down to two minutes and one minute, you're still trying to pack all the same information. You know, if you're trying to share a five tips for you know, raising healthy drug-free families in a minute, it's gonna be really tough to do. You're going to try and share too much in too little time 
it means none of it's actually going to drop. Try and focus on one key point, particularly if your video is less than a minute, and maybe you might get two points out there too. Go into a little bit of depth about it. Now, it's quite amazing what you can share in one minute if you just focus on one point. So don't try and share too much. You're better off to make 10 one-minute videos than one 10-minute video. Focus on that one point, dive a little deeper into it, add some substance in behind it as well, okay? So that was tip number five. Don't try and share too much in your video. Tip number six is make a mixture of videos. What do I mean by that? In the past, I've broken down the sorts of videos that you should be making into three major frameworks. I talk about connection videos, transformational videos, and promotion videos. Let me define those a little bit for you here, and then we'll talk about why we need to be making a mixture of those. Transformational videos are really simple. These are videos that help to transform the health of your audience, hence them being called transformational. Sometimes you might have heard me say, the idea of these videos is to get your audience one step closer to the health outcome that they're looking for. So again, maybe you're trying to help young parents or parents of any age, um, you know, raise drug-free families. Maybe you're trying to help athletes perform better. Whatever it is, what content can you share, share that helps to transform their health? That's a transformational video. A connection video is more, about, is more about making a personal relationship. It's often about letting people see behind the scenes, getting to know you a little bit more. Remember, it's social media. You can't just be on there all the time just talking about your work. It gets boring. It's not what we want. We want to get to know you. When people are choosing health practitioners nowadays, personality, relatability, understanding, connection is one of the things that we're all considering. It's not like the 1950s when the local healthcare practitioner was like the mayor of the town and we just used to have to put up with them and be told what to do. Now we have choice and we want a relationship with our health practitioner. And connection videos are a great way of letting people see behind the scenes. And then of course we've got promotional content, which is pretty self-explanatory. The goal of a promotional content is really to get somebody to take an action most likely to get them to call your office. So you need to make sure that you're mixing up all three of those different sorts of content. Now maybe, you know, again, if we look at 10 videos, maybe one or two out of them, are 10 are, are very much promotional, but four or five of each of those is a split between that transformational and that connection content, okay? So a mix of video types is really, really important there too. Now onto tip number seven. If there's a most important part of your video, and there is, it's absolutely the first six to eight seconds. You need to, inside of that, you really need to make sure, one, that you're rehearsing that, and then you need to also make sure that the introduction of your video has a really strong hook. Now, the idea of the hook really is to capture the attention of your audience. Now, you can do this by starting with an enticing question. You could share a major takeaway or a bit of a preview of what you're going to learn. So it might be by Starting off the video, this is in today's video, I'm going to share three things that you can do to help ear infections heal themselves naturally without drugs and without having to worry about tubes. So in that too, that hook there is enticing. If I have a child that's having ear infections or if I know somebody that's having ear infections, I might be engaged or hooked into watching that video. I could uh, start the video with a question. Are you sick and tired of going back to antibiotic after antibiotic or going for tubes for ear infections? If so, in today's video, I want to share three simple tips and off we would go from there. That's the idea of a hook. Now, I'm not for writing out your videos word for word and wrote learning them, but I am for you at least writing out your introduction and rehearsing that a few times. It's the part of the video where most of us start off a little bit nervously um, and we can lose a bit of our confidence. Now, once we get into the video and we get up and rolling, then it gets way easier from there too. So tip number seven is a couple of things. Rehearse the introduction and make sure you have a really strong opening sentence, opening hook that's either a question or a bit of a preview of what's to come. Now that gets on to the next most important part of the video. This is tip number eight there, is your call to action. You should always have a call to action in your video. You should be always telling your audience what to do next. Now that might be just as simple as, you know, ask me a question, inviting them to tag a friend or a loved one who needs to see. That's a great thing to do. Side note again, it too. This is often referred to as a digital referral. Now, if we're wanting to get our message out to more people, let's just say that you've shared a video about your infection tips, you get to the end of that video and you say, hey, listen, if you've got a friend, a family member or a coworker that needs to hear this message, be sure to tag them in underneath there. 
Now, the idea here is that if somebody knows, you're just reminding them that that's what they need to do. They want to tag, ah, oh, that's right, yeah, Bill at work was complaining the other day about his little daughter. She has these ear infections. I'll tag Bill in this. Now, I see members of my uh, community influencer members doing a great job with this. Um, the other thing to do is ask them to share it. Again, this is a plea here. Say, listen, there are too many families out there suffering needlessly with ear infections, going from antibiotic to antibiotic to antibiotic. There are other solutions. Can you do me a favor? Can you help me share this message? If this has resonated with you, hit that share button underneath. This strategy of either getting your audience to tag a friend in or to share them is a great way for you to really uh, exponentially have your message reach a whole bunch more people. I've got one of my great community influencer members, um, Michelle, wonderful co-pack driver in the UK who gets loads of shares. Every time she makes a video, there's six, seven, eight shares on it, mostly because she's inviting her audience to do that, okay? So always have a call to action and then rehearse that too, okay? Get clear before you even start your video on what your call to action is. It's the other area where most chiropractors get super awkward. At the end of their video, they're working their way through, call to action comes, where we're gonna ask somebody to do something, and this is where we get all awkward and it feels kind of weird. Rehearse it. It's okay to ask people of things. You've just delivered great value, you've built up some trust there, there's a little bit of reciprocity. Now's the perfect time to ask them to do whatever it is that you want them to do. Okay, on to tip number nine. Get the most out of the camera on your mobile device. Now, most of our new phones will shoot all the way in 4K. This visually looks fantastic. The image is nice and crystal clear. You'll be sharp. So it's much more likely to capture attention of people inside of the social media feed. I mentioned to you beforehand, Instagram's already come out and said, poor quality video, we won't show it to as many people. So make sure you have that turned up to the best quality uh, that your video can actually shoot. If you're on an iPhone user, you go into settings, then you go into camera, and then turn it on 4K, okay? It's beautiful, the videos will look much better. This will have your video stand out. You'll look a little bit more professional. When your community sees professional videos, they're much more likely to think that the service in your practice is more likely to be professional too. And as I mentioned beforehand, um, the social media platforms will be much more likely to disperse and share those videos also. So again, whether you're on iPhone or Android or whatever you're using, make sure that you have the resolution of your camera turned up to the best that it possibly can shoot. Now on to tip number nine, while we're talking about making sure that we get beautiful quality video, remember most of the time our phone lives in our pocket. Now if your pockets are anything like mine, they end up with lint and dirt and dust and God knows what inside of them too. And this ends up all over the lens on your camera. So maybe what you're doing is you've got this fancy new iPhone 13, like I'm shooting on now, the actual video on it is amazing, um, but if the camera lens is all smudged and oily and disgusting, you're not gonna look your best. Again, it's gonna be another thing that's gonna get in the way. So that's one really simple thing that you should be doing. Make sure that you clean the lens on your camera or the screen, wherever what you're doing, whether it's a frontward facing camera or the rear camera, Make sure you just, whether it's your t-shirt or a nice clean cloth, give it a good clean beforehand. Visually, it'll make an enormous difference as well. On to tip number 11. Okay, this has been 11 tips that will help you make better videos, which will help you attract more patients, which will help you make more money, have more impact, and bring a whole bunch more enjoyment into your life and practice too, and that is add text to your videos. Now, text is great in that it captures attention. There's two sorts of text I wanna talk about. First of all, you've heard me talk about subtitles in the past. I've been talking about adding subtitles to your videos now for the last three or four years. It used to be a bit of a process to do it, but now Instagram and Facebook will automatically do it for you. If you're making lots of uh, Instagram, uh, you can't do it on a reel just yet, but you can do it on Instagram stories. You can add a sticker on there, which will automatically give captions to you. Again, most people are watching your videos on their mobile device. Most people are watching with the sound turned off. And if the sound is turned off, but there's text on there that they can read along and you've got that great engaging hook at the beginning that'll capture their attention. So along with subtitles, you might also wanna add some text on the screen. Text that gives a little bit of a preview of what you're gonna be talking about, you know, exciting uh, attention grabbing words or images, movement, stickers, GIFs, anything like that that you can add to your video that's really all about capturing attention. Really what you're trying to do here is it's imagine it's like you're kind of jumping on the spot saying, here, look at me, look at me. Things that we can add, text, stickers, emojis, arrows, moving bits and pieces. We're really trying to fire into that reptilian part of the brain that's triggered by movement, okay? It's triggered by movement because in the old days when we were walking across the savannah, we saw movement, might have been a lion or a tiger or a snake, and our brain needed to see that movement and stop and look at it. And we want to take advantage of this by doing the same things. All right, gang. 
that's 11 tips. Now, maybe you need to work on all 11 of those, but perhaps there's just one or two that you went, oh yeah, that's really what I need to do. I need to work on my introduction a bit more. Or maybe it's like subtitles I need to be adding, or maybe your videos are too long. Whatever it is, start with the ones that are most easy for you to implement. Don't get overwhelmed by these lists, okay? Just work one by one all your way through them. These tips will have you producing better videos, videos that are more likely to be engaging. Videos that are more likely to build trust when you're making a mixture of videos that are connection and transformation. Not only will you be positioning yourself as an expert, that's what transformational videos do. When you actually help somebody get a result, you position yourself as an expert. That differentiates you from the other people in your community, okay? When you're making videos that are connection, that builds trust because I get to know you as well. These will be the sort of things that will help you start to get results from your video marketing as well. Give them a go. Let me know how you go. Perhaps drop me a message and let me know which was the standout one for you. Gang, until next time, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. I look forward to seeing you back here real soon. Take care. Bye. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out my Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work with you to help you apply it, implement it and systemize it. The Community Influencer Group Coaching Program is designed to help you increase your practice income, impact and enjoyment. Join me over at anguspike.com forward slash join. That's anguspike.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you there.